Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Lion's Den. This is the Weekly Roar. It's that time again for us to continue my latest series called Effective Thinking, Your Pathway to Success. Today, I'll be speaking about why it may better serve you to steer away from what's popular, and that could mean becoming a little unpopular. I'm going to tell you about all of this in just a second, but first, welcome everyone. I'm Greg Storch. I'm the owner of Lion Enterprise, a leadership development and coaching business, and I'm the founder of a worldwide bartered coaching program called The Helping Hand. I'm a certified professional leadership coach and a certified leadership speaker and trainer. All right, so last week we came together in the lion's den and I spoke about reflective thinking. Reflection gives us the ability to learn from our past mistakes and successes. It helps us identify things that are worth doing again and also the things that we probably should avoid repeating. When we mentally visit our past situations, we give ourselves the opportunity to think with greater understanding, and that's why reflective thinking can contribute greatly to our success. Now, I shared some of the benefits to reflective thinking, and then I gave you four actions you can start taking to develop the skill and become better at it. During this series, I want you to spend time making an assessment of where you are with each of these thinking skills on a scale of one to 10. And then once you make your assessment, think about what actions you need to take that are going to move you from where you currently rate yourself to just one more closer to 10. Sometimes when I have clients do this scaling exercise, They aren't exactly sure what actions they need to take to move forward, and that's where I help them determine their next steps. So if you're like they are and aren't sure what actions you might need to take, reach out to me and let's have a chat about how my coaching might help you get unstuck and moving forward again. And by the way, let me just remind you that you can book a free 30-minute discovery session with me to find out a little more about what coaching is like and whether you and I could work together. It's like test driving a new car. And the link to my schedule is right here. Okay, just one last reminder before we start today's topic. If you weren't able to join us last Wednesday for the weekly roar or if you need to catch up or you just want to watch that session over again, you can access my free video resources on my website at www.lion-enterprise.com. Click on the Lion's Pride Library menu to find video number 119 for last week. There's already two volumes of videos under that link. So while you're in the Lion's Pride Library, make sure you look around and stay a while. It's a free resource and it's a great way for you to get more of the roar. (laughs) All right, everyone. Again, welcome to today's episode that I'm calling Why You Should Want to Be Unpopular. Now, I can say with a great level of confidence that we've all experienced at some point in our lives, the unchallenged alignment to fit in with society's perceptions and to please its expectations. No matter who you are, what culture you may be a part of, where you grew up, or even the color of your skin, we all know based on those things that there were certain expectations placed on us. What expectations? Well, here are some pretty basic ones. What about the right age to get married and have kids? In the United States, we tend to marry at a young age, but 
over here in Italy, it's not uncommon to have children living with mom and dad into their late 40s. <laughs> so there's one expectation we try to meet, the marriage expectation. What degree should you obtain if you want a good future? Where should you live? The order of life events, high school, college, marriage, buy a house, get your career. <laughs> Maybe we do it because we want to feel part of something or accepted by a group or a community or even our organization. It might be okay as long as you don't lose your own identity and can keep your ideals. But the truth is that these expectations please in an imaginary entity known as popular thinking. Even though a lot of people agree on certain expectations or thinking, it doesn't mean it has to be correct or the best way to do it, or even the only way. So that's what I'm talking about today, questioning popular thinking. And when we engage in that activity, it can sometimes make us unpopular. Popular thinking is really like just following the routine that most people are used to. Now, I'm not labeling popular thinking as good or bad, but I want to point out why it may hinder you from achieving the success you want. Kevin Myers was a former English journalist, and he once said that the problem with popular thinking is that it doesn't require you to think at all. <laughs> he continued to say that good thinking is hard. If it were easy, everybody would be a good thinker. But unfortunately, many people try to live life the easy way. They don't want to do the hard work of thinking or pay the price of success. It's just easier to do what other people do and hope that they thought it out. <laughs> now, the truth is that popular thinking can make us idle from just doing things without thought because that's the way we've always done it. <laughs> popular thinking is also a lid to our own innovation, development, and growth. So, popular thinking is simply continuing to do things the way they've always been done time after time. You've probably also heard of it being referred to as having a herd mentality. And that just means accepting and following what the majority says or does and ignoring your thoughts and feelings just to please a group or feel a part of one. Literally, a group of animals fleeing from a predator shows the nature of herd behavior. Listen to this. Each individual herd member reduces the danger to itself by moving as close to possible to the center of the fleeing group. And while the herd looks as though it's a coordinated unit moving together. You've seen those videos with all the gazelles all jumping and running in the same fashion and moving in the same direction. You may think it's a coordinated unit moving together, but its function actually comes from the uncoordinated behavior of self-serving individuals, <laughs> their desire for self-preservation. Isn't that interesting? So you can probably see how easy it can be to get stuck in popular thinking. I want to tell you this story to give you an example of where I participated in uncommon thinking. When I was a newly commissioned officer in the Navy, I was a healthcare administrator. It was very common for healthcare administrators to join a governing body. And one of the popular ones was the American College of Healthcare Executives, or we called it ACHE. When I reported to my first assignment after commissioning, the senior officers at my command would mentor the junior officers and they would push us to join ACHE, which all of them were members. Now, most of the junior officers joined the organization for one reason or another. 
maybe they felt they had to because a senior officer told them to do it, or maybe they did it because that's what everyone else was doing. But I didn't do that. This was another time in my Navy career where I challenged popular thinking. I wasn't gonna just join ACHE because someone told me to do it. You know, at that time, there were annual fees for that, that organization, like most organizations, but on a limited income, that $150 membership fee was a lot of money to me. So that kind of prompted me to challenge the thinking. I remember asking why I needed to join that organization. And I was told that it would help with promotion and it's what all healthcare administrators did. Ah, there it is, the herd mentality. Well, it wasn't the right thing for me. I didn't see value in it. And so I never joined ACHE. And you know what? I still had a very successful career and I'm a highly decorated retired naval officer. So at a very young age, I learned to challenge the status quo and ask questions before taking action. That's a key indicator of challenging popular thinking. And yes, sometimes I was unpopular for it. You know, another example of popular thinking comes from the workplace and it can actually keep team members from accomplishing the goals of the organization. So let me explain that. Because of the nature of popular thinking, it can lead to groupthink, which is a phenomenon that occurs in decision making when group members avoid disagreement while they strive for consensus. The takeaway is that you have to be really cautious if you decide to take a different approach or when you want to present new ideas to that team. Your attempts at innovation and creativity could turn to hostility and objections from your coworkers and that's how goal displacement happens. As you can probably imagine, when we challenge popular thinking, we give ourselves the ability to skip around the ordinary life and break the limits of the present. And that's what allows us to constantly improve and grow. Unpopular thinking helps us to become innovators and creators. And as you know already, when we challenge the status quo, we stretch ourselves and that's how we continue to evolve and grow. So today, I'm encouraging you to challenge the acceptance of popular thinking. And I want to share a few reasons why. First, popular thinking is really an oxymoron, <laughs> if you think about it. It's not thinking at all. If you really think about it, popular thinking is blindly following what everyone else is doing and hoping someone got it right. Remember my story about joining the ACHE? Had I followed popular thinking, I would have joined blindly, paid annual fees, attended conferences, and moved up through the levels of the organization, but still not be any closer to where I wanted to be. When we blindly follow a trend, we aren't doing our own thinking. The second thing is, it's not always true that there's safety in numbers. We need to understand that there's a big difference between acceptance and intelligence. There's a lot of people out there who look for safety and security in popular thinking, but at the end of the day, popular thinking can offer false hope. Just because a lot of people are doing something doesn't make it right or even a good idea. Popular thinking is what caused millions of people to believe there was a link between childhood vaccines, namely MMR, and autism. And there are still many people out there that believe that today. Yet, in 2011, an investigation into that initial study that made that claim showed that the medical histories of all 12 of the patients whose cases formed the basis of the 1998 study had all been altered 
for specific results. The third reason I'm encouraging you to challenge the acceptance of popular thinking is because it'll get in your way of embracing change. Popular thinking could be a synonym for status quo. All it does is put confidence in the idea in the moment and then holds on to it with everything it's got. And that's why it resists change. Instead of making assumptions that the old ways of doing things are probably the best ways to do them, we should assume that there's a better way to do almost everything. Just because something may have never been done before doesn't mean that it can't be done. Try to tell that to Henry Ford. The last reason we really should challenge accepting popular thinking is that it's only going to serve to keep us average. Popular is normal, and normal is, well, average. And I don't know anyone who wants to be average. Average is the best of the worst and the worst of the best. And when we follow popular thinking, we limit our success. That's why I called it the lid to our creativity, innovation, and success. When we accept popular thinking, we don't expend any energy. It's the path of least resistance, but we have to avoid common thinking if we ever want to achieve uncommon results. So what do you say? Are you ready to start questioning popular thinking? <laughs> me too. So let me share five ways that will help all of us develop this habit of questioning it. Popular thinking has been proved to be wrong and limiting time and time again. Right now I'm thinking about the cloth diapers my mother used to use on all seven children. <laughs> it isn't hard to actually question popular thinking. Where the challenge comes in is just getting started to do it. So maybe these tips will help you. First of all, think before you follow. Unpopular thinking is severely underrated, unrecognized, and sorely misunderstood. And yet, it's the doorway to opportunity and progress. Get away from the herd mentality and think before you follow. Now, I get it. It's super easy to just follow what everyone else is doing. But I can tell you that there isn't much wisdom in doing what everyone else does. If you really want to succeed, you have to think about what's best, not what's popular. Now, this one's going to require that you be willing to be unpopular. Being unpopular is uncomfortable, but just remind yourself that it's okay. Don't blindly follow popular thinking just because you haven't thought about what's best. The next time you feel like following popular thinking, just take some time to stop and think. Think about what's best, not what's popular. Now, the next thing that can help you is to learn to embrace different ways of thinking and appreciate thinking that's different from your own. Interact with people who are different from you, people with different backgrounds, education levels, different professions and personal interests. And be intentional about it because the people you spend the most time with are the ones who are creating the way you think. So if you spend more time with people who think outside the box, then you're more likely to challenge popular thinking and continue to grow. Now, let's face it. Anytime we find a certain way of thinking that works for us, we're easily tempted to use it over and over again, even if it doesn't work well anymore. So the third thing to help you challenge popular thinking is to always ask questions, especially about your own thinking. When we become too attached to our own thinking and how things are done now, then nothing will change for the better. And that's why it's important for us to challenge our own thinking. 
sometimes the greatest enemy to tomorrow's success is today's success. The fourth suggestion I have for you today is to try something new in new ways. Yes, it requires risk, mistakes, and maybe even failure, but it can also lead to huge successes and change for the better. Innovation's a great way to get out of the rut of our own thinking. We can do that by looking at our daily routines and questioning why we do them that way. If you want to start doing something in a new way, take a new route to work tomorrow or order something off the menu that you've never had before. Unpopular thinking thrives on asking questions and seeking options. I've heard it said before that most people are more satisfied with old problems than committed to finding new solutions. How you go about doing new things in new ways isn't as important as making sure you just do it. So get out there today and dare to be different. Okay, now the fifth and the final tip I want to share with you is that you're going to need to get used to being uncomfortable. Popular thinking is uncomfortable. It's easy. It's a snuggly old blanket. But that's just it. It's old and comfortable. And (laughs) if you took the time to really look at that old blanket, you'd probably notice that it's time to be replaced. If you want real results and success, there's no doubt about it that you have to get uncomfortable. If you challenge popular thinking and begin to make decisions based on what's best instead of what's popular, you'll soon realize that you won't be as wrong as people think you are. You may not be as right as people think you are, but you will be better than you thought you ever could be. It's going to take some guts to face the consequences of success and to just go for it. At the beginning, you might find yourself with little support or no support at all, but that's fine. Thinking on your own makes you different and it's what's going to keep you separated from the herd. While everyone else is running around in circles from the momentum of self-preservation, you can be on the high road to achieving your dreams. It's all about being willing to question and challenge popular thinking. All right, everybody, that is it. That is the eighth skill that you can assess to improve and become a more effective thinker. For your assessment on whether or not you challenge popular thinking, Just ask yourself this simple question. Do I reject limitations of common thinking in order to accomplish uncommon results? Go ahead and do your assessment on this one and see where you rate yourself on that scale of one to 10 and then ask yourself what action you need to take just to move one number closer to 10. Okay, so next week, I'm going to talk about the truth behind having strength in numbers when it comes to shared thinking. You know, leaders who value the thoughts and ideas of others quickly realize the benefits of shared thinking by accomplishing more than they ever could on their own. So if you want to hear more about how you can reap the benefits of shared thinking, Just come on back to the lion's den and tune into the Weekly Roar next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for supporting me and and watching. I appreciate your comments. And thanks for watching the Weekly Roar today. I appreciate you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, I'm going to post another link here after this watch party that you can share to your pages and with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Okay, until we meet again next Wednesday, remember everyone, be powerful, but stay poised, just like a lion.
Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the Weekly Roar live event at lionenterprise.com. If you enjoyed this video, please tell others to join us each week here in the Lion's Den. Thanks again, and see you next week.